Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice cubic equation. Why do I call this nice? You'll see in a little bit. We have x cubed equals x squared minus x plus one third, and we're gonna be solving for x values. So let's see how we can approach this problem from different angles. My first method is going to involve the cubic formula. So to be able to use the cubic formula, we would like to put everything on the same side first. Let's do that and write it this way. And then I want to replace x with something else so that I can get rid of the quadratic term. So the idea is depress the cubic. So we have something like x cubed plus bx plus c equals zero. And then this equation can be easily solved, which I'm going to show you how to do. Okay, so that's the whole idea. Let's see how we can do that. I'm going to replace x with y plus one third. Let me tell you where that comes from. First of all, you look at the coefficient of x squared, which is negative one in this case. You negate it, which becomes positive one. And then you divide it by the degree of this polynomial, which is three. That's how you get that one third with the plus sign. And of course, I need to change the variable. So I use y. And you're like, why are you using y? It doesn't matter. You can use any variable you want. So let's go ahead and replace x with y plus one third. That gives us y plus one third to the third power minus one y plus one third to the second power plus y plus one third minus one third equals zero. Great. One third cancels out. Let's go ahead and expand all of these. And the, usually the way I expand the cube is like I'm going to cube the first term, I'm going to cube the second term, and then I'm going to do the three AB thing, which is going to give me Y multiply by A plus B, which is Y plus one third. That's how I usually do it. That's how I memorize it. But you can also use the binomial theorem if you want. Same idea. And just expand the quadratic normally, and you get the following. Great, let's go ahead and distribute and simplify this even more. y cubed plus 1 over 27 plus y squared plus 1 third of y minus y squared minus 2 thirds of y minus 1 ninth plus y equals 0. And notice that y squared cancels out and that was the whole thing. Like the goal was to get rid of y squared. Now everything else we can kind of put together. We have y cubed, right? And then we have the one third of y and then minus two thirds of y, which is going to give us negative one third. And then plus y is going to give us two thirds of y, right? That's the answer. Uh, that will be the answer at the end. Or you can add these two, four thirds minus two thirds is also going to give you two thirds of y. And then as a constant, we have the one over 27 minus one over nine, which is supposed to give us negative two over seven negative two over 27, but uh, that's just gonna be a constant on the right-hand side. So ju just added that number to both sides. Now, it's good that we have the constant on the right-hand side after we depress the cubic, because we're gonna use the cubic formula as follows. A plus B quantity cubed minus three AB multiplied by A plus B, which is the formula that I use again uh, for the uh, expanding a plus b quantity cubed it's just that this expression moved to the other side and it's gonna you're gonna get the same thing but in this case we don't need to move it so it's gonna be like that and a plus b is basically gonna represent y here so that now you can get a equation so basically when you have an equation like this one of the solutions of this equation will be a plus b how do i know that because if you plug it in it's gonna work and obviously this is a proof of that, right? So if I can solve for A and B, then this should work, right? Because I'm able to find Y from which I can find X because remember X and Y are related, right? So here's how we proceed. We kind of look at the coefficients of Y and the constant term, and then we compare it to our original equation. And then from there we find the values of A and B. So by comparing these two equations, you notice that the coefficient of y is two thirds, which is supposed to be negative three ab. So negative three ab is equal to two thirds. And the constant is two over 27, which is a cubed plus b cubed. So let's go ahead and write it as well. Now this gives us a system which may look cubic to you, but it's actually quadratic because if you cube both sides here, and I could probably just uh, isolate ab first, that should give me, if you multiply both sides by negative one third, that should give you negative two ninths on the right hand side. And then cube both sides, 
and you should get a cubed b cubed, which is something you can use. So that'll give you a cubed b cubed equals negative 8 over, by the way, 9 cubed is equal to 729 because it's 81 times 9, so it'll be that one. Now, we have a really cool system. Like I said earlier, this is not cubic, it's quadratic. Because if you go ahead and make the replacement, like replace b cubed with 2 over 27 minus a cubed, you can go ahead and plug it in here, and that should give you a cubed multiplied by 2 over 27 minus a cubed, which replaces b cubed, equals negative 8 over 729. And then you can go ahead and distribute and put everything on the right-hand side, 8 to the 6 minus 2 over 27, a cubed minus 8 over 729 equals 0. Now, why is this quadratic? Because if you change the variable, set this equal to c, and I don't want to use b because b is already in the equation, we get something like c squared minus 2 over 27. Hopefully, you can see what I'm, what I'm seeing. And then we get the following. So we get a quadratic equation, to keep a long story short, and we can solve it with the quadratic formula. If you want, you can go ahead and multiply everything by 729. And 729, by the way, is 27 squared, which is 9 to the third, and also 20, wait, did I say 9 to the third? It's actually 9, um, 9 to the third power, yes, and it's also 27 squared, yes. There's a good reason, because uh, 3 squared and 3 cubed. Okay, cool. That works. Now, let's go to multiply everything by 729. We get 729c squared minus, you're going to get a 27 simplify, um, you know, cross-canceling stuff, minus 8 equals 0. <laughs> I don't know if I made it clear, but you get the idea. You distribute and uh, cross-cancel, and you get the following equation, which is not very easy to solve because of the magnitude of the numbers. They're kind of large. Um, so, but if you look at uh, the c values, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, minus uh, 4ac, that's going to give you a plus sign, but a is not 1, so we have to write it, and it's going to look like this. One thing that kind of makes this problem a little easier, maybe, is the fact that 54 is 2 times 27, and if you square it, 54 squared is basically going to be 2 squared, 27 squared, which is 4 times 729. So 4 times 10, 721 is actually a common factor, which you can pull out. So if you do that, you're going to get something like, 4 times 729 inside the radical, which is equal to this. So it's going to give you 1 plus 8, which is cool, because that's actually 9, and square root of that number is just going to be a 3. So now we can take this out as 2 times 27, which is 54, by the way. So we get 54 plus minus, there's a minus sign as well, 54 times 3, which is the square root of 9, divided by 2 times 729, and this shouldn't be hard to solve. Uh, because you can pretty much divide everything by 27, I think, right? Can you divide by 20, 54? Yep. Because this is like 2 times 27 times 27. So it's 54 times 27. So if you take out a 54, you're going to get 1 plus minus 3 divided by 27. Great. So from here, you get the C values. 4 over 27 or negative 2 over 27. Awesome. That was easy, right? After all these simplifications, of course. Kind of need to factor and use a little bit of number theory, prime factorization, so on and so forth. But to remember that, what am I going to remember, right? <laughs> okay. A cubed is C. Yes, this is what I need to remember. So C is A cubed. So that what that means is, uh, obviously B cubed as well, because A and B are interchangeable. But from here, we can find the values of A and B. For example, uh, from here, a can be written as the cube root of 4 divided by 3. And here you can write it as the cube root of negative 2 divided by 3. So there's going to be two uh, possibilities for C, but that's going to give us, uh, you know, more possibilities. But anyway, if you just go, go with one of these solutions, uh, you should be able to get uh, the answer, I think. For example, if I use this one, right? Oh, by the way, if uh, A is this, um, is B going to be the other value? Oh, I think so, yes. If one of them is B, the, if one of them is A, the other one should be a B. So I could probably write uh, the Y as, and by the way, A is supposed to be the cube root of this value. Okay, so those are A and B values. So I can write the Y as A plus B, which is the cube root of 4 over 3 plus the cube root of 2 over 3. So, okay, that's the Y value, just one of them. And of course, if you switch them around, it's not going to matter. So you get the same thing. 
But now I need to kind of go to the x world and the relationship is x is equal to y plus one third. So x is just gonna be these, this number plus one third. Uh, to keep a long story short, we can kind of write it like this because they all have a common denominator, which is really cool, right? So we get the solution as a cubic and this is real, by the way. What about the other solutions? Uh, well, if you wanted to go ahead and divide this polynomial by x, let's call this x sub one. If you divide this polynomial by x minus x sub one, which is gonna be a very crazy process, uh, you're gonna get the other factor or the quadratic. You can use Vieta's formulas, so many other ways to do it. But since this main, uh, this channel mainly focuses on real numbers, I'm gonna stick to the real solution. But if you're real curious, you can go ahead and explore it. But if you really like complex numbers or you're interested, go ahead and check out my other channel that focuses merely on complex numbers, which is A plus BI. It'll help you remember because A plus BI is always a complex number, right? Well, yes. <laughs> Anyways, so you get the idea. This is my solution, and that brings us to the end of the first method. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the second method because I think the second method is really, really cool. And let's see how uh, that proceeds, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do is, I kinda wanna get rid of the one third because that bugs me and I wanna multiply. And remember, I told you that this was a special cubic equation, right? Why is that special? You'll see in a little bit why. Now, if you look at this expression carefully, hopefully you're gonna recognize this piece here. Did you recognize it? I hope you did. If not, I'm gonna show you what that looks like. But let's go ahead and do the following first. Let's put everything on the same side. And do you still not recognize what this looks like? Okay. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and separate two x cubed and write the three x cubed as two x cubed plus x cubed, which is something we can do, right? And then write the rest of the expression. And I hope this rings a bell. If that doesn't, I'm gonna go ahead and box this piece here. I don't think I need that piece. So oops, uh, I gotta kind of do it this way. Now notice that, did you notice? Okay, this is x minus one to the third power, if you haven't noticed. But that's okay if you haven't, that's fine. But these patterns are something like, this is one of the things that you should definitely recognize, right? Binomial theorem, at least at the quadratic and cubic level, you should know that. But anyways, here's what we can do. We can isolate one of these, and I don't know which one we should do. We, we, we could probably just leave this one alone. And I feel like I made a mistake somewhere because this doesn't add up. But anyways, maybe I messed up somewhere with the numbers like plus minus signs. I don't know, you, you could probably find out, but this second method should make that more clear. So, so we're adding two cubes. You could also use the sum of two cubes formula, right? And what that formula tells you, actually that's probably a better way to do it. This is like the cube root of two x to the third plus x minus one to the third equals zero. This is, the cool thing about that is I can expand a cube plus b cube. By the way, this is different from the first method a, b. But uh, it can be written as the cube root of two x plus x minus one as one of the factors. And the other factor is just gonna be like a squared cube root of two times x squared minus a, b, which is like cube root of two x multiplied by x minus one plus x minus one quantity squared, which gives us the quadratic and set the whole thing equal to zero, which makes this equal to zero. And guess what? From there, you should be able to get the exact same solution. The, what trick is though, if you try to solve for uh, x here, you can take out the x, you're gonna get something interesting, which kind of looks different from the other solution. And let me tell you why. Now this is the x value, right? The real value of x. And the, by the way, the other solutions are complex. You can go ahead and check it out. But if you go ahead and compare this to the previous result, they look different, right? And you're like, what the heck is going on? I probably didn't make a mistake, by the way. It's kind of verifies, but, uh, or maybe I did, who knows? But the idea is, this is sum of two cubes, right? Okay, great, I think it is. So if you multiply by the conjugate, you're gonna realize, uh-oh, we're actually getting something similar to this. So the, find the conjugate and multiply by that, you should be able to get the result. But I probably made a mistake somewhere. Anyway, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.